awesome. Amen. And he's doing wonderful work. Yes. When we trust the Lord and we put everything in his hand, he's able to do exceedingly abundantly, abundantly and above all things. Abundantly. We ever ask or hope for him. Yes. According to his spirit that lives in us. Mm -hmm. Amen. 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 God is good. All the time. You know, Friday when we were uh, ministering, uh, as usual, uh, during the evangelism, I have uh, 50 different hats to wear and make sure that everybody is uh, doing what they're supposed to be doing. So, you know, Brother Frankie and uh, Brother Jeff are mobilized to preach freely, that they don't need to worry about the preaching part. Uh, I go there on Fridays as a servant. I don't go there as a preacher, I don't go there as a pastor, I go there as a servant. I go to serve, I don't go there to lift my own voice up, you know, because every person has to know that we have, we are servant first above all things. Yes. And as I, you know, as I was, you know, just, just like how uh, Brother Frankie and, you know, uh, and others here on Sunday morning, making sure that everything is taken care of. Uh, all our leaders are making sure everything is taken care of, that we can preach the gospel uh, Sunday morning, whether it's worship, whether it's through uh, the word, that the, the, we don't need to worry about the, 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 the stuff that needs to be taken care of. Yes. And uh, the testimony is that uh, as I was walking around and coming back, Sister Tamara is uh, holding this young man and uh, she was talking to him, and then she goes, Pastor, come here. I said, yeah, he says, he's from Iran. Talk to him. <laughs> Praise God, you know. Uh, and, uh, and I told him, I said, I said, hey, how are you? Good. He says, you guys are not like the mullahs in Iran. <laughs> he says, they, they get you to sit on their feet and then eat you to believe the Quran, why are you guys giving me free, free coffee here? <laughs> you know, we're supposed to give the mullahs the coffee, you know? He asked me that question, right? And I said, it's because we love we love our city. We love our the people of God. You know, we love people that people will come to, to the Lord, right? And uh, just uh, as Brother Frankie was sharing, you know, the coffee and the tea ministry is as much as important as the preaching. Yes. Because it's yes. grabbing people, so, you know, people say, well, I'm not doing anything, I'm just making coffee, I'm bringing tea. Uh, excuse me, you are actually the the, the bite. Bait. The bait. The bait for the bite. I got you. I got you. Thank you, the bait. You're the bait. Thank you. See, I love my English teachers. <laughs> the bite part. That don't mean the same thing. The bait. And actually, there's anointing in it because there's anointing in it because they've come. So, they were watching and they were, he was asking, he goes, he says, he says, what? He says this cross made me stop. If you ever have seen the cross that Brother Frankie has for over uh, 14 years now, uh, has all sorts of things written on it. Depression, depression, shame, loneliness, shame. Yeah. addiction, Beauty. all sorts of things. And he says, I want to take a picture with this. Uh, I want to sit at the bottom of this big cross, take a picture. I said, uh, and he was explaining to me, he says, I've known, I have many Christian friends. I go across the city, I see many crosses. That all the arts decoration is nothing. He says, I've heard Christian people tell me a lot of stuff. Doesn't mean nothing. But this cross reflects my life. This is not a decoration. This is reality. Reality. This is life. And he says, I wanna pick, I wanna sit at the bottom of it and take a picture because it's defining me. It's telling me who I am. And uh, I, I shared with him quickly my testimony regarding how I became from a Muslim to a Christian. And, and he, says, he says, thank you for sharing your testimony because that means a lot. But I'm going to go look at, I'm going home to look at this picture and let this picture speak to me. Because I shared with him that the Lord spoke to me and that's why I got converted. To, to Christianity, not because, uh, you know, just because uh, I heard the scriptures, I heard the Lord. And uh, so he was, he, and he went forward. And uh, the whole night we were looking at how to, where to put the cross. We were looking where to put the cross. And the Lord gave us the direction where to put the cross, and that was very important for us to do. The Lord is in control of all things. We just need to be available. 
We need to make ourselves available. And the Lord is asking us to make ourselves available in this hour because He wants to touch our nation in a profound way. Amen. He wants to change our nation in a profound way. And it's only the Lord that can change it. And uh, uh, if you are not interested in politics and you think maybe my sermon is boring this morning, sorry, but I have to address some of this stuff that needs to be addressed. And this, the Bible does care about politics as much as it cares about, uh, about your spiritual life being. But as long as it's seen through the eyes of God, not through the eyes of the flesh. You see, there's a big difference. Seeing politics through the eyes of the flesh, you will contra-attack God. You see politics through the eyes of God, you will actually do the will of God. Okay? And it is important for us to understand that. I shared on Tuesday night, and I want to share for the rest of you guys tonight, today as well, that the last three and a half months, while everybody is uh, jumping, shouting, doing all the things that they're doing, uh, and to each, uh, I give them the credit based on their being leading. I'm not one person to jump and shout unless the Lord says jump and shout. The Lord says, wait upon me, seek my face, and I will direct you. Because I believe one word from God changes everything. Amen. One touch from God changes everything. I don't need to worry myself about anything. I just need to wait for God to do it. The woman with the blood issue, she went and saw so many resources to get her issue resolved. But the moment that she heard about Jesus being in town, she said, I just need to touch the hem of his garment. I know, and I will be made whole. She spent so much money, so much effort to get her blood issue resolved, could not get it resolved. But when she touched the hem of Jesus' garment, immediately she got healed. A touch from Jesus, touching the heart of God, immediately brings healing. Amen. We can know how to touch the heart of God. And in that moment, Jesus is standing there, crowds are pressing from every corner, and let me put it this way, the church is screaming to God from every corner, and then suddenly Jesus says, who touched me? Mm. Excuse me, Jesus? Watch me, who touched you? Don't you see the crowd around you? Everybody pressing? We are your bodyguards making ways for you to walk through the cross. What you mean, who touched you? So many people touched you. He says, no, somebody touched me by faith. Yeah. Somebody touched me knowing that I am able to do all things for them. Yeah. Somebody came, didn't matter whether what they were seen or unseen, whether the miracle was happening in the front of the crowd. All they wanted was just a small, small touch. Who touched me? God is looking for people who just know how to touch God. Yes. And how to walk in faith by God. And watch the faith of God transform a nation for His glory. Our efforts are good. But as we heard last night in our men's meeting, we cannot substitute good for the great of God. The biggest enemy of the work of the greatness of God is good. A lot of good works can be put out there, but there, the greatness of God is not being projected the way it's supposed to be. And God is calling us to show His greatness. And I remember very clearly that when Monday the Lord spoke to me audibly and he said, I'm calling Canada to a 21 day fast and pray. Amen. You want this nation to be healed? Yes. Only way that can be healed is if God is in charge of souls. Amen. I said again, only if God is in charge of souls. Amen. And God is in charge of this world and he can touch every soul that he desires to the way he desires to but he's looking for a church and for believers across Canada that will not raise their behaviors but will raise their spirit in the presence of God and trust the Lord is able to do exceedingly above all things according to the spirit that lives in us Sister Annie was talking to the art gallery and she was telling them about our resurrection weekend, what we want to do over there. And she told them, she says, the church wants to come there and have a, have a meeting. And then and they say, oh, who are you? Now? And they said, we are the night shift. We are the night crew. We are the night crew. And immediately they know who we were. Oh, you're the guys that preach every Friday night there. 
They have a huge event happening downtown. The winter festival, whatever they call it, the art festival. And they allowed us to continue preaching the gospel. Not telling us, hey, this area is sealed. You can't preach. They said, go ahead, continue preaching. Don't worry. As long as you guys are, you know that you can just continue preaching. What Brother Frankie was sharing is, when God favors you, you don't need to worry about the world. The world cannot touch you. The only reason the world is touching you is because you are not walking in the favor and the glory of the Lord. When you are in the glory and the favor of God, nothing can touch you, nothing can hold you, nothing come against you. And I have talked, I'm speaking this out of the abundance of my heart, even those who try to persecute you will not persecute you, but will favor you. I've seen it in my life, mm -hmm. I've tasted it in my life, and I don't worry about it either. Mm -hmm. I don't worry about who hates me and who loves me. I don't care about what kind of what I have to do to project myself. I don't need to project myself because he is projected through my life. Mm -hmm. My life ought to be a testimony unto the Lord. And the Lord says, we're going to go to a 21-day fast and prayer and invite the entire nation of Canada to come and join in and broadcast this across Canada and tell whoever is willing to fast and pray, let them join in. And I have good news. There's, we have almost every province in. Oh, yes. Province are we have every province. Every province. Few, two, two provinces are actually missing. I know by Tuesday they will be in too. Amen. They will get it. We're going to fast and pray for 21 days. And God gave him 21 days prayer directive. It's not just fasting to lose weight. It's not dieting. Yes. So if you want to go on a diet, this is not for you. Because the book of Daniel tells us when they did not partake of the king's table, they looked better than those who ate of the king's table. They were much healthier. So don't think, oh, I'm going to go on a Daniel fast. I'm not going to eat no meat and stuff. I'm going to lose weight. I have bad news for you. You're going to actually look better than people who eat meat. Because it's going to make sure that you're, 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 you'll be sustained by the Lord. Because when we fast, God sustains us. Not what we eat. His word sustains us. And he has, in this prayer directive that he's given, we ought to, uh, we are going to join right across Canada, 21 days. Everybody that is going to be part of it is going to be uh, praying the same prayer together as one. Amen. Amen. In the book of Daniel, chapter 2, and I shared this on Tuesday, and I feel it's important for me to share it again today for those who missed it. The, the book of Daniel, chapter 2, talks about this. Daniel. The Lord speaks to him and says, in verse 21, the Lord speaks through Daniel to us. He changes the times and the seasons. He is the Lord. Mm -hmm. Let's go verse 20. Daniel answered, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever. For wisdom and might are his. He changes times and seasons. He removes kings and sets up kings. He gives wisdom to the wise and knowledge to those who have understanding. He reveals the deep secret things. He knows what is in the darkness and that they and the light dwells with him, with him. I thank you and praise you, O oh God, my Father, who has given me wisdom and might. And has made known to me known what we desire of you for you have made known to us the solution to the king's problem the king of canada has a problem can i re rephrase that word the prime minister of canada has a problem Amen. the premiers of canada have a problem Amen. but our god doesn't have a problem Amen. And our God knows the solution for the problem of the king. Yes. And the Lord knows how to deal with the problem of the king. That's why he says he is the one that changes seasons. He is the one that places kings, prime ministers, 
presidents and he is the one that removes them and replaces them. If it wasn't us that elected them, we were just tools to elect them and select them. God already knew why they needed to be there. Yes. As much as people think that people elected Justin Trudeau are bad news for them, God used them as a tool to elect him because God wants to awaken his church. Yes. His church was sleeping. Amen. His church was sleeping. And when the election came back to be elected election going forward, the last time we were putting our hope in politicians, not putting our hope in Jesus Christ. Amen. We were telling people who to vote for instead of saying, get on our face and see God change our nation. Amen. The church was divided who to vote for. And that's what Brother Frankie was talking in Hungary to the pastors. He says, let's not talk about who needs to come to the office. Let's see who needs to be glorified over Hungary. Let's talk about we need to glorify Jesus Christ over Canada, over Hungary, every nation, that God can do only what God can do. And God has the solution. And He is looking for a church that is humble to seek His face. Amen. He mobilizes us. He favors us. He causes us to go before kings. He causes us to speak in front of authorities. He allows us to have favor in places that we usually would not have favor. How do I know that? Read the whole Bible, you will find it. Joshua, uh, uh, Joseph went before the, the, the uh, Pharaoh and was favored. Joseph went before the jail keeper, was favored. Joseph was in the uh, father's house, he was favored. Every time he went, wherever he went, he was favored. Because he was seeking the face of God. Amen. He wasn't seeking his anointing. He was seeking the face of God. And every time he went, he got favored. And then he was put in charge to do things that is pleasing to God. Daniel, the same way, he was seeking the face of God, and God put him in charge to favor the ways of the Lord. Amen. We read through the history of the Bible, every man and woman of God that saw the face of God, God placed them to place it. We don't need to fight, we need to seek the face of God, that God will give us influence. Amen. How does God give us influence? God places people, and saves people. Yeah. How does God give us influence? By people getting saved. Yeah. By people falling into repentance. By people changing their mind. That's how God gives us influence. And the Bible says, God has given wisdom to those who seek wisdom. God has given them knowledge, the secrets of the king, to how to deal with it. So is there a problem? Yes. Is there a solution? Yes. 10,000% yes. And the solution is that we need Jesus Christ as a Lord and as a King of our nation and be able to fight His fight, not our fight. We are in a fight. Don't get me wrong. For a second, don't even think, uh, uh, take me wrong. We fight against spirituality, uh, principalities and sp spirits in high places. We're in a fight. We're in a fight. Don't get me wrong. We're fighting. In high places, not on earth. I'm not coming here to be disrespectful to our authority, our, our government, because that's not my position to do that. Neither would I do that. But what I want to tell you is, don't think for a second, our prime minister and our premiers are that smart. There's a spirit that is influencing them. There are spirits that is influencing them to do what they're doing. They are not that smart. Spirits are influencing them. The same way spirits can influence you and I. And I will address that because Jesus talked about these times that we're living in. But God will remove them and God will place them in place. We just need to be available to the, seek the face of God. Amen. And we need to be going into a time that we will seek the face of God and learn how to be silent in the presence of God and watch Him at work. 21 days, the Lord is calling His church to be still and know His God. Amen. To pray and fast, to seek the face of God right across Canada. If you remember, 
The book of Proverbs talks about the heart of the king is like water in the hand of the Lord. He turns in whatever direction he desires to. If you remember, on Monday past week and Tuesday past week, even though all the demonstrators in Ottawa were removed, Justin Trudeau was eminent about why the Emergency Act needs to continue remaining in place for another for the 30 days because this we doesn't want the protesters to come back. He was very eminent about it. And he was trying to get it passed through the Senate and everything else. He was shouting from the top of his lung. Monday and Tuesday. Wednesday, he calls and says, a press conference, we are canceling the emergency act. Rule. Law. And I said to the Lord, I said, Lord, what happened? Why did he do that? He says, did you just preach last night about the heart of the king is like water in my hand, I can turn in whatever direction I want to? Mm -hmm. My church answered that they're going to go to 21 day fast and prayer. I did the first miracle for them, for them to know. I can change just the truth just like that if I desire to. Mm -hmm. Did he hear from God? No, but he has people that are around him that influence him. That God will influence them to influence him. Mm -hmm. God will use, he didn't hear from God. Please understand me clearly. God didn't speak to him, but God has people around him that can influence him, that influence him. And because the church answered, yes, God, we will fast and pray. God says, I want to give you the first sign of the miracle, how I can change the heart of a king overnight, if you trust me. But now watch, the next 21 days when you guys are going to fast and pray, watch how I'm going to touch the nation of Canada the way that only I can do, and nobody will get the credit. Amen. Nobody will get the credit. Absolutely nobody. Because God is in charge. Yes. God is in control. Yes. And the church has to be awakened to this hour that it is not in your doings that you change it. It's in his direction that all things happen. Mm -hmm. Faith without works is dead. We talked about this last night. But what kind of works? The works that is inspired by the Holy Ghost. The works that the Holy Spirit tells you how to do this and where to go. Just like how Joshua went to war and God told him, Joshua, I know that you are a man of war, but this battle, you cannot win it the way you desire to win it. This battle, I have to win it. Jericho has to come down and it has to come down by the sound of the trumpet of heaven. Amen. This hour, what is going to happen to our nation, it has to happen to the sound of heaven. It cannot happen through the sound of mankind. Yes. As much as mankind thinks we are in charge, we are not in charge. Yeah. The earth is the Lord and the fullness of it belongs to Him. And then very shortly after all of these things that are taking place, we see Ukraine goes to war. Or Russia was so. <laughs> Russians are scary, man. <laughs> if any Russians here, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> Russians just need to say good morning and you shiver. <laughs> With that, you know, hello, their, their voice is just like, you know. <laughs> Brother Frankie knows how to say it. Say it, Brother Frankie. It sounds very, you know, you're like, okay. Whatever that means, yes. <laughs> Russia starts a war and people full of false prophecy. It's the end of the world. You see Russia attack Ukraine, next is they're going right to Israel. Matthew chapter 24 tells us it's not the end of the world. Matthew chapter 24 talks to us. He says in verse 6 and 7, it says, For you shall hear of wars and rumors of the wars. See, yet not be troubled. For all these things may come to pass, but it's not the end. 
That was for my King James people. Now, for my Amplified people. <laughs> and you will hear of wars and rumors of wars. See that you are not frightened or troubled, for this must take place, but the end is not yet. That's not the end. Then he goes to the next verse. For nations will rise up against nation and kingdoms against kingdoms. There will be famines and earthquakes in the place, in, in, in the place, after place. All this but the beginning of birth pains. Then they will hand you over to suffer. The affliction. The end is not here yet. We are not even close to the end. We are not even close to the end. If you think it, don't believe it. Because it says these things have to happen. And people say, well, people are dying for their faith around the world. They're, they're getting handed over to be dead and killed and for his name's sake. It's not still not the end. The end is not here. Trust me, when the end is here, you don't want to be here. The reason God is still merciful because the Spirit of God is still on earth. The Bible is very clear. The Spirit of God will not always, always drive with man. He will exit this world. And in that time, if you belong to Him, you will exit with Him. Amen. Because if the Holy Ghost possesses you, He will take you with Him yes. when He's leaving. If you possess the Holy Ghost, then you will be left behind because He's going to leave you. You're not, he is not owning you, you're owning Him to do things regarding how He wants to you to do. And I will tell you how. How people can possess the Lord and how they're using the Lord in vain is written in the Scriptures. The greatness is the scripture has told us all about it. I love that the scripture exposes everything to us. Amen. And it says to us in verse 23, Then if any man shall say unto you, Lo, he is a Christ, or they believe in, in, in him, for he shall do he shall for there shall rise a false Christ and a false prophet, and they shall show great things and signs and wonders in much of that they are possible, they shall deceive the very elect. Mm -hmm. And those days had not been shortened. No human being would endure and survive for the sake of the elect God has called chosen ones. God has shortened the days. If anyone says to you, Behold, here is Christ the Messiah, or there he is, or there he is, do not believe. For false Christ and false prophets will rise, they will show great signs and wonders so that they can deceive and lead astray as many as possible of God's elect. My brothers, my sisters, do not be deceived by signs and wonders of false prophets because they will mimic and they will do exactly what God is doing to deceive you, to tell you that they have the right gospel. And Jesus says that is a false gospel. Rebuke that gospel. Kick that gospel off because that is a false Jesus and that is the false Christ and has no room in the house of the Lord because all they're doing is deceiving the elect of the God. That's all they're doing. Their job is to deceive the elect of God. You want to know why there's a war in Ukraine? I'll tell you why there's a war in Ukraine. There's a war in Ukraine for one reason. They want to phase out this whole COVID thing and they need a new distraction. That's what really it is. They're trying to phase out this COVID whole thing, the lockdowns and everything else, the, the, the whole mandates and all of these things, but they have to do something to unify everybody again over, over that issue. Yeah. And the issue now became Ukraine. Mm -hmm. They tried it with Afghanistan when they were leaving Afghanistan. They couldn't do it. So they have to find a new distraction. distraction. And then a little puppet or a little pawn in their hand. Hey, buddy Putin, how are you? 
I call him Putin. That's it. He's delicious. You know? I know what his name is. You know? He looks like a Putin. He looks like a potato. <laughs> Don't kill me. <laughs> it's not Russian agency. <laughs> this is just wild. Putin. <laughs> Let's, let, let, let's do something. They all work together. All these world leaders working together. Do not think for a second that they are working against each other. They're working for one purpose, for one world government. They're working, they all are part of the same satanic system that is out there. That's why I don't believe in any politician as the good interest of God's people. I don't believe anybody that wants to talk about God's kingdom and is a politician because they have to sell out their soul to be part of the system of this evil. And they call each other up. Hey, let's create a diversion, diversion. Let's create something that we can slowly phase out this COVID stuff. But we need something that will unify the whole nations. Do you know the news in the last few days? Oh, Canada is unified. All across Canada, people are standing and still protesting against the war in Ukraine. Free Ukraine. No war in Ukraine. Stop the war. They sh showcasing the unity and there is no longer any problem with masks and all of these things because now they're trying to slowly phase everything out and all of these things and they don't care about people dying in Ukraine as long as they get their agenda forward. Don't get caught up that all oh, US and Canada is so lovely. They are as guilty as Russia is. As guilty as Russia is. Don't think Europe is a, is a, a Christian nation, a Christian Europe. There is no such a Christian nation or Christian Europe or Christian North America. There is no such a thing existing. They're all doing their own business. They all don't care about your life or my life. There's only one that cares about everybody's life, and his name is Jesus Christ. Amen. He is the life. He is the life giver. He is the savior, and he cares about everyone's soul. Yes. There is no politician in this world that cares about your soul. Yes. Do not be paralyzed by politics. Be informed by them. Just like the book of Daniel says that you should know the secrets of the king and deal with it. Right. I pray for Ukraine because I feel sorry for them, that they're holding them hostage for the little war games that they want to have. I pray for the souls of the Ukraine, or those who are in danger, that their souls be saved before they die. I pray for the souls of the Ukrainians because they are souls that they need salvation. They indeed, I pray for Ukraine. I'm not happy about this war. Neither am I uh, I'm ignorant to this war. I am totally understanding what is happening. But at the same time, I am not going to allow anybody to deceive the Church of the Living God. Amen. Hallelujah. Because the Church of the Living God has to walk in the truth. Amen. The Scripture says to us very clearly. Apostle Paul tells us very clearly: if this Bible is not taught and preached in its whole, on pick and choose only what you desire to, even if an angel from heaven comes down teaches you anything contrary to what. We have taught you. Let it be a curse unto him. Yes. Mm. Apostle Paul was talking about what Jesus was saying. False preachers will rise up. Right. Self-anointed people will rise up. Right. People who say, God spoke to me, but they have nothing to back it up and nobody to even come and confirm the word that they have because they feel that what it is, that they, it is good. Right. And they become deceivers. They become like Satan. My brothers and my sisters, you know how Satan works, Frankie? He always isolates people. He didn't talk to Eve when he was with Adam. Because Adam is the covering of Eve. He had her singled out and asked her a question. What do you think? You know deceiver people, they always ask you a question. What do you think? They want to make you, you think. They want to make it, make you feel that it is you getting revelation. And they said, are you sure what you know is true? Yes. Perhaps maybe you don't have the truth. Let me give you the truth. God doesn't want you to be like him. Excuse me? I am not God. But he's single out. I'm telling you, false prophets, I'm going to expose false prophets today. 
Amen. False prophets are always talking about signs and wonders. Right. Signs and wonders shall follow you. You shouldn't be talking about it. It should be following you. Yes. Because you're seeking the Lord. Amen. Talking about how much signs and wonders they're doing and how much God is using them. Blah, 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 blah. I'm telling you, if it wasn't because of grace of God, sometimes I feel like I want to preach. <laughs> and then do the resurrection afterwards. <laughs> all they talk about is all signs and wonders. No scriptures. God did, did this to me, God did this to me, that God did this to me, that God did this to me. That God did this. And then they always get you isolated. And they always entice you in their speech. And they never can look at you eye to eye if you have the truth in you. Because they don't want to get in confrontation with you. Because they know you have no fear to confront them. They come. In wolf and sheep clothing. They come as little lamb. Poor me, look at me. I'm just an innocent baby. But then when I deceive you, I got you. It's the Bible, it's not Ali's word. Yeah. The Bible says they will come with signs and wonders, they come with miracles, they will come and preach a false Jesus, a false Christ. To do what? To deceive. He didn't say deceive the world. Correct? He didn't say to deceive the world. To lead, to deceive, and lead astray. If possible. The if part is people who will listen to garbage. If possible. Even God's elect chosen ones. The choice is yours. If you're going to listen to it. The choice is yours. Yes. There's many false preachers have risen up. Self-appointed preachers that have risen up. Their lifestyle doesn't match to the Word of God. Their lifestyle is not matching to God. And people are bewildered because of the signs and wonders that they do. That's why Jesus says, how long how long do I need to be with you? He says, oh, you wicked generation. This is what Jesus says. He's not talking about signs and wonders should not happen. Let me be clear with you this morning. Signs and wonders need to happen yes. because we're following Jesus Christ. Yeah. That's, that's the, that's the offer of following Christ. Seek you first the kingdom of God and all his righteousness. These things, that's all the offers of whatever the Lord wants to do. But it says, how long will you seek, you wicked generation, signs and wonders? People who are seeking signs and wonders are wicked. I said it. This is the Bible. And I'm not sorry about it, neither. If you're looking to do signs and wonders only, to show how God is with you, you're wicked. It's the word of God. If you're offended by it, and you're not repenting for the fact, March 21st is coming. I told you guys. See you. We are not going to stand for false teaching in this house. Amen. We pay the highest price for the False teaching has to leave the body of Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen. Zero rule. Because they are dividing the church. That's what the scripture says. They are sowing discord. That's like Satan. They saw in discord by asking questions. They saw in discord. Mm -hmm. And Jesus says, mark them. Tell everybody about them. Expose them. And tell them, there's a door. Please leave. And that, that's not only with me. That falls on all of you. If you love Jesus, do not compromise the gospel of Jesus Christ. Amen. Do not 
compromise the truth of Jesus Christ. Amen. I'm begging you, do not compromise. I'd rather lose one person by winning thousand souls to Jesus. Amen. Don't be deceived by false love. True love, you tell the truth and you stand on the truth and you do the work of the ministry of Jesus Christ regardless of us. Amen. God is calling his church to be awakened, to be bold. I know Sister Annie already told me, Sister Annie says, Pastor, March 21st comes, I'm joining the team of beating the truth out of people. <laughs> On, on, on Thursday, I was at the at the at the house church in Twasa, and uh, uh, they enticed me with a glass of milk. <laughs> <laughs> I love milk, you know. They told me, "Hey, you know, we have milk for you. Would you like to come?" And I said, "Oh yeah." <laughs> but she did not. She did not know that I'm really coming for. I had to make the video Spanish video, but. But I said, yeah, there's milk, there's milk, I'm coming. You know, because that's all it took for us to give you milk. I said, oh yeah, give me milk and I'll be there. My brother Frankie saw the milk there and I was drinking when he says, oh, go give him some meat. He will preach on Sunday, twice and he's feeding people milk. <laughs> some meat, you know. And, uh, but, I, but I shared something and I, and, and I said, one thing I love about brother Frankie, he is a sheepdog. He sees a wolf, he goes, <laughs> <laughs> and the wolves don't like it. They get offended by it. And I said, it's good. And I said, we all need to become sheep dogs. Yes. Because yes. souls are at the danger. Yes. When we see a wolf, we don't need to be afraid and be nice to them. Wolf. <laughs> and the sheep, they, 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 they will run away. Sheep dogs are needed. I'm a sheepdog for God's kingdom. And my responsibility, and Pastor Sian's responsibility in this church is one thing. And the ministry of the elders is one thing. Guard the souls of people. Amen. To return them to the Lord Jesus Christ yes. fully and wholly. Amen. That is our responsibility. And if we don't do that, God will hold us accountable. Yes. And the, the Bible says their blood will be actually on our hands. Yeah. And they're deceived. Because we chose to be silent. The blood of Canada's souls also will be on our hands if we do not worry about them. Pray for them and intercede that God will change them. Canada needs a change. Canada needs the move of God. Amen. The Bible says God knows the secret of the darkness. But he also knows he holds the light in his hand. That's us in the book of Daniel. He also holds the light. Yeah. We got the light. The light is in us. And we ought to give the light to the world. Mm -hmm. And we need to preach to the world. These 21 day fast and prayer is extremely important because the soul of Canada is at risk. Mm -hmm. If Canada is not awakened the last two years, especially the church is not awakened the last two years, that your fleshly behaviors has caused God to be grieving, then we need to, I, I don't know what the next round will bring. But the last two years has brought a lot of disaster onto Canada because the church has been sleeping. The church has been selling God for money. Yes. And the church has been divided into false teachers and true teachers of the word. I thank God that God didn't put us like Israel into 70 years of bondage. Because the book of Habakkuk says, God then told Habakkuk, even if you know what I'm going to do, you will not understand it. And Habakkuk told God, talk to me. He says, well, okay, since you want to really know, I'm going to let Babylon come take over Israel and take them into bondage. Two years, Jeremiah preached to them, repent of your sins. Repent of your ways. Oh no, Jeremiah, we don't know. Can I, can I replace that with something else? It says, Jeremiah, you do not know the Lord is, is uh, our 
that our God, Jerusalem is a city, nothing will happen, you are a false prophet, blah, 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 blah. And they throw them in jail, and they didn't repent, and eventually Babylon, according to the prophecies of Jeremiah, came to bondage, and Habakkuk as well, it came to bondage for 70 years before God delivered them through Cyrus. Can I, can I, can I replace that a little bit? I don't want to change the Bible, but I want to bring you to a, to a, to a, you know, to an analogy. I'm not the false preacher. Like <laughs> brother, 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 brother George, we had a book, Second James, last night. <laughs> Second James, no, I'm just forgetting. <laughs> because we were talking about a lot of false preachers that preach things that are not in the scripture and they make it scripture, you know. And then right after it says, Wait, can you turn to Second James? I said, oh, it's a Second James. <laughs> <laughs> Just a joke. But but I'm not tr trying to change the scripture, but I want to, to, to understand something. They said to Jeremiah, this is the city of God, nothing can happen to it. Yeah. God will protect it. And Jeremiah says, repent. God spoke through Habakkuk, I will put them in bondage. And I will allow Babylon to rule over them. <sighs> can I put it to today's era? In Canada? But our constitution says they cannot do that to us. Yes. Really? If God wants it to happen, the constitution of Canada has nothing to do with it. Yes. There's nothing constitutionally can hold back the punishment of God. Okay? I just want to be real clear. It's scriptural. It's Bible. If God wants Canada to go to punishment, there's nothing that can hold back the yes. punishment of God. The act of state of emergency that came out was a taste of what the enemy can do and take all your constitutional rights away. Because once the emergency act came to pass, all the constitutional rights was out of the door. Okay? It's just a foretaste. I just want to be very clear to you. The church of God, the church of the living God, needs to be on his face, seeking the face of God, because we need the mercies of God in this hour. Yes. Because as much as we have constitution, if God is not with us, if we do not have the constitution of heaven with us, the constitution of earth can be always changed, but the constitution of the word of God is never changeable. You cannot involve an emergency act against the constitution of God. But you can against the constitution of man. And God allows, remember the book of Daniel, he plays kings and he removes kings. Yes. Seasons change. This was a warning church for two years to all of us that if we are going to follow politicians and people who are preaching falsely, we are going to go in a deeper problem than when we had the last two years. Mm -hmm. The grace of God is wonderful and it's been merciful to us in this hour. Let's not take it for granted. Let's take this moment and seek the face of God, preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ to as many as we can preach and Amen. bring them to the hope of glory. There is only one way that we can change this nation when the glory of God starts shining brighter and brighter and darkness has to flee. Mm -hmm. There is no such a thing as darkness. Darkness does not exist, by the way. It's the absence of light. There is no such thing as darkness. Scientifically, there is no such thing as darkness. It's the absence of light. When the light of God is not in our nation, this nation will become dark and dark and dark. Yes. When the truth of the Bible from Genesis and Revelation is not preached, this world becomes darker and darker and darker. When we are not concerned about people's soul and the soul of this nation, but if we are concerned about the politics of this nation, we will pass in the wrong way. For one second, do not put your trust in chariots horses. and horses, but put your trust in the Lord. Do not put your trust in government and in constitution and in politician. 
Put your trust in God and see how God is going to reform this nation. Let God be God and let his enemy be scattered. Amen. Let God be God and let his enemies be scattered. God will scatter his enemies and God has a plan. After 70 years of bondage that Israel was in, what did God do? Through the same prophet, through the same prophet he brought Cyrus and he reminded Cyrus of the prophecy of Isaiah and he told him, hey Cyrus, by the way, do you know who you are? God spoke about you 125 years before you were born. He says, I will raise up a king named Cyrus. He will be my king and my shepherd. It's important to understand that he will be my king and he's my shepherd. He was not only going to be an authority of a government, but he's going to also pastor my people. He's going to be a man that is going to have my heart. Only one time God said that. He didn't say that even about King David. He didn't even say that King David is my king and my shepherd. He didn't say that about any of the kings of Israel. He only said about Cyrus and about Jesus, the same prophet. This is my anointing is upon them. And God is going to raise people like that up amongst us. God is going to raise people like that, that is going to set us free from things that are in captivity. But I'm going to tell you one thing. He's already risen us up. We are kings and priests. We are the sons of the living God. And we have the solution for salvation. We have the answer for God's glory. And we have the resolution for the problem. We just need to act on it and walk in it. In the name of Jesus. We just got to do it. If you love the Lord, as you say you are do, if you desire the Lord, the way you say you desire the Lord, get these prayer requests out. Get these fast and prayer time of out. And watch how God is going to do it. Get involved in this fast and prayer time. Get involved. Get involved. Don't worry about the meat. God will sustain you. God will sustain you. Don't worry about your, your health condition. God will sustain you. The Bible says they look better. They look better than those who are eating the meat of the king's table. You will look much better than that. God will sustain you. But go before the Lord. If you think you have uh, health issues that will hinder you, I'm going to tell you something. Don't worry about it. I prayed about it. God said, tell them, don't worry about it. I will sustain them. I will sustain them. If they put in their trust in me and they know that I'm about to do something in their life and through their life, I will sustain them. Don't worry about becoming hungry or going hungry, whatever. God will sustain you. The Lord is going to sustain you because you have made him the bread of your life. Amen. And watch. After March 21st, God will give us more signs of how he's moving in Canada. Amen. And then there's another period that is coming up that I won't share with you yet. But the Pentecost is coming. There's another move that God is going to release. And then we will see a wild revival across Canada. We will see a wild revival. I know God is going to send us a wild Amen. revival across Canada. Amen. And when there is a revival, the government has to take a back step. Amen. Every time that there's a revival, the government has to take a back step. Not because the government is revived, because the church is alive. I'm a product of a revival. You are a product of a revival. The revival that I was a product of was 9-11. When 9-11 happened, I called on the Lord, and the Lord answered me. I remember how churches were full all across Canada. Because everybody was seeking the face of God, church. Because everybody was shocked. But because God last time sustained us, because God last time sustained us, this time when the trouble came, people didn't seek the face of God. Yes. Which is okay. Which is fine. God wants us to seek His face not differently. Amen. Not because of trouble but because of solution. And I know this revival is going to be very different than all the other revivals because people 
who are called by my name, humble themselves, repent of their sins, turn away from their wicked ways. Then I heard the prayers in Canada. Then I answered the prayers in Canada. Then I healed their back. And I established myself in Canada. Not that we will rule Canada, but that we will release the glory of God in Canada. There is coming a day that the Antichrist and the One World Government will be fully in charge. That day is prophesied in the Bible. We cannot stop that day. But until that day, we have a job to do. To stand for the souls of the nation of Canada. Because God has placed us for such a time as this in Canada. And every church of every nation needs to be standing for the souls of their nation. Because they were placed by appointment and by anointing of God for such a time in that nation as well. Praise Him, come ahead. Come ahead as we want to go. Glorify God. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ.